So next up in the choice of 26 boxes, I bought two boxes at $130 each. And this is one of the two boxes we'll go through next. So starting off this box, we have this, uh, let's see, it's a five-piece set. Uh, power boring wood bits. Pretty much look new. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is new. It's a little dirty, a little scratched up. It's just been in a box with so many other new tools that it's actually received a little bit of wear. Um, I'm going to try to pull all these together. I think there's three different sizes of these uh, self-ejecting plug cutters. Um, this is the smallest. I, I don't see that it actually lists what's... Oh, here's the sizes on the back. So this must be the 3 A's, And then we got the half inch, I would assume. And then this one here must be the 5 A's. Next up is this uh, 45 904 diagonal pliers flush cutter. Yeah, as you can see, this one's new in great condition. Now this one is not marked on the pliers or the packaging where it's made. I would assume U.S. We got a couple more of these here, flat, uh, flat nose pliers. So this one's actually marked USA, and the one before that, I just don't see a stamping on it right there. I'm sure it's USA, but not stamped as far as I can tell. So this is the, uh, the flat long nose pliers. So it's basically a needle nose that's uh, flat on the outside edges. Again, it's new, great condition of this uh, long nose pliers, serrated tip cutters, it says. Again, new old stock, great condition. Next, we have this extra long needle nose pliers. This one really does have a long, very narrow tip on it. As you can see, it's fall here and the leaves are coming down as we speak. Great condition. So glad that these don't have the spotty rust as some of the other tools in this lot have. And what I mean by that is, uh, here's a new old stock, uh, Lyman pliers, and you can see it, it does just have a little bit of pitting. I mean, this is, this is basically bare metal, so over time in humid conditions, but uh, still, it's, it's still in great shape. It's still really nice, really heavy duty. And uh, we got this, what have we got, a 45, 441. Uh, it's like a little pruning shears, I believe. I would imagine this is new old stock. Um, it does have... Just a little bit of pitting on the end there. Got another one of these Lyman pliers back here. Let's see. Same model number as the last one. Has a, just a light little bit of patina on there. Still in great shape. Really nice piece. Got a water pump pliers, tongue and groove pliers, whatever you'd like to call it. Some people still call these channel locks, even though it's not made by channel locks, but nice condition. Here are the actual channel locks. Uh, looks to be new in the package, unless it's just been put back in the package. This is the 426 series. Uh, I'm sure it's new. It does have a little bit of discoloring in them. It does have a little bit of discoloring in the metal. We got a, I'm thinking it's a tin snips. Uh, looks like it says Craftsman in there. Can't quite tell the part number. We got a box of small hole gauges. Uh, of course, you know. Must be new in the package. I'll pop it out real quick. This one still has like some uh, original wrapping. Probably some instructions. And there they are. Perfect condition. Really need to have new tools that are, you know, been in the packaging for 40 plus years. All right, we have a little scraper here. Definitely used, but uh, still usable for sure. We've got a long needle nose Let's see, I think under there it does say leverage, uh, leverage tools, uh, sort of a, oh yeah, oh I'm sorry, oh no it says leverage tools and this is the lever wrench. I got a set of uh, Craftsman carbide tipped uh, masonry bits, look new, got a really nice uh, 45, 379, very nice uh, slip joint pliers, looks like it's brand new. Have a 45074 diagonal cutter. A little bit of surface rust. Very light. Likely new. We have a smaller version of a diagonal cutter. We have a nice little, I believe this is a six inch. Yep. It's a 44602. Got a little bit of something going on there, but I might have just wiped it off. Brand new. Very nice uh, needle nose here. 45082. I don't know what year they start using that font. 
Um, I think this is the one where it's almost like printed on. The older ones I showed in the package here, those were stamped. But this looks like it's uh, laser etched or very nice pliers though. You know, a lot of people want to give Craftsman a hard time that they were just cheap tools. Um, they were cheap, but uh, a lot of these tools are, are still good quality tools. Here's a 4505, sort of a needle nose, very long handle on it. Another one of those side cutters. I think it's the same number as the first one, the bigger the bigger one. Yeah, it's a 45074. Oh, it looks like we got another set of three plug cutters down here. And then uh, we got a magnetic 9-inch torpedo level. Craftsman, of course. Uh, this is before they were putting barcodes on the packaging, so I'd assume it's early 80s, late 70s. We got a couple little files here. Chrome Edge ignition file. It's a neat little file. And then we have another one here, a 4-inch extra slim taper file. Now the packaging, you can see it's got, I don't know, maybe a little bit of even mildew on it. But this is likely new. Let's see, we got a, uh, is it, yeah, uh, Betts, Thomas and Betts, um, little crimper. And we got another little diagonal cutter. A, another one of these uh, water pump uh, tongue and groove pliers. This one has a little bit of surface rust. Uh, we have here a uh, cont continuity tester. Is that what that says here? Yep. Got a little light on it with the alligator clips. We got a little vice grips, let's see here. $5.99. Little vice grips made in the USA. I never loved the Craftsman vice grips. Of course, Peterson make, made the best ones at the time. I think this is a automatic center punch made by Grafco. It's made in Taiwan. But uh, still works. I'm, uh, usually vintage Taiwan tools are still pretty good quality. Even modern day Taiwan tools. I mean, a lot of people like to hate on Taiwan or, you know, tools made in Asia. But, uh, you know, GearWrench makes pretty good tools. They're, they're made over there. Tekton makes pretty good tools that are made over there. And last in this lot is another 45074 diagonal cutter. This one has a little bit of surface rust in there, but overall still really nice condition. So here's everything on that one. You know, when you first see that you pay $100, $120 for a box, it seems like a lot, but I mean, if you went to buy something like this on eBay, you'd pay $30 to $40 for that in that condition. I and mean, that's what they go for. And if you want to look them up, 45, 379. And that's without me doing the research. That's with me, I'm my best guess. But I, I feel pretty confident that's a pretty close price of what you'd have to pay for that in this condition. Okay, so this is going to be the last one of the choice of 26. I don't remember if I paid 130 or 110. I had two at each price. Um, I don't recall. I don't recall if this is the 110 or 130 box. To be honest with you, I did not look through it really well i just kind of grabbed it after seeing some of the things in here so we're going to kind of go through it together to see what's really in here uh first off we have this huffy uh oil can all right we got this little claw hammer here it does have a part number there not sure who makes it all right next we got this craftsman uh, 65 78 pry bar crowbar ripping bar as they call it we've got an oil filter wrench no branding that i can see we've got three of these uh lou electric fittings company uh, must be a conduit vendor we've got three of those in here we've got this old sears flashlight uh, definitely looks like it's seen its better days another flashlight here ever ready probably gonna go right in the trash all right what do we got here we've got a remington grip edge rod saw okay it cuts the toughest materials <laughs> i don't know what year that's from but this the card it's on is in really great shape 
we got Torx keys. I'm guessing it must be like uh, Allen keys with Torx in on them. Yep. Now there's no branding on this, but that looks just like a Craftsman part number. Now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think this is a, a fuse puller. I think. Unless I'm, I think, but not 100% sure. It's made by Ideal Safety Grip. The one thing I did see in here before I grabbed it was this little snap-on palm ratchet. It's got a uh, Craftsman extension and a spark plug socket mounted to it. Down in here we have a half-inch set of sockets. These are V-series like everything else. Uh, what's nice, well, I mean, first of all, they, they look new. But what's nice is that they're six-point. A lot of times you find them in a 12-point. Now, I would say this is uh, definitely missing a size somewhere in there possibly uh, it, looks like we're missing two sockets all right then we have looks like a lot of craftsman tools left here let's check this thing out first concept 2000 hong kong what do we got a bike speedometer or something here what is this thing looks like it mounts on something oh is this a radio <laughs> that must be a radio that looks like it's probably some sort of a radio benfield box saw so i'm guessing you mount this to a bench uh, with the screw holes there your saw blade goes in here and then you got a little clamp here to hold your workpiece. Sears starter current. Charging current. You got a set of hex keys here. Well, it looks like they actually call it set screw keys. Same thing, I imagine. We got a nice tongue and groove pliers. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but it's in good shape. Another one of these handy dandy rod saws. Got a one inch old school V wrench. Another tongue and groove. A little dirty, but good condition. Got a uh, half inch drive thumb wheel ratchet. Another one inch. This is the V series. Nice big embossed sears. Adjustable. That's a pretty nice wrench. That's made in Japan. Japan does make some good tools once in a while. We got a couple adjustables here, a couple eight inch. Outside of being a little dirty, look like they're brand new. Uh, tongue and group pliers, a little bit older one. Oh, this is a Japan made this, so this is another Sears branded. Great condition. Not immediately seen any branding, but pretty neat little flashlight. A little bit more well used tongue and group pliers. Well, this is not a tongue and group pliers, it's just adjustable. Very nice condition pliers here. This is a uh, This is a uh, spring clamp pliers, I think they call it. Got a one and an eighth, one and one eighth wrench. I saw this in there when I grabbed it. Now, obviously the packaging is a bit screwed up. Looks like it's got some rust in there. So we'll just open it the rest of the way. So after further inspection, um, the box is more than a little crusty. The bottom of the case is rusty. The paint is flaking off the case. But the sockets did not get affected by the... They got a little bit of paint chips on them, but that's it. Somebody's happy. <laughs> All right, next up we got this Chrome Edge, Craftsman Chrome Edge file. Oh, this is the uh, Craftsman Vanadium. I think this is a 4505, if it was a modern day player's. That's an old one. We've got a curved handle needle nose. Unfortunately... Just being stored in the elements so long the bare surfaces did gain a little bit of patina from a little bit of rust a little bit of light surface rust got a craftsman punch got a crown logo ratcheting box wrench got another one here different not the crown logo an l-shaped 3a breaker bar a set of brass thickness gauges we got this piece here it's got a friction ball on it I would say that is for a breaker bar, much like this. So 
So I was definitely saying that that's what this is for. And of course, we also have this 3 8 breaker bar. We got the old Flying V Selector 3 8 ratchet, flathead screwdriver, V series uh, teardrop, a crusty ratcheting box wrench, a Sears offset wrench, handful of punches down here. That looks like an insert for a screwdriver. I don't think I had the screwdriver in here. Got a number of crowfoot sockets here. I got a four inch Craftsman adjustable. I think this is my third or fourth starter manifold wrench. Oh, this is nice, a little re-threading tap set. Uh, we got a tap it wrench. Flare nut wrench. This is an Armstrong wrench. A few more random sockets. A little screwdriver. And then we have nine Saltus wrenches. We do have three eighths to three quarters. So that would be a seven piece set. Plus an extra three eighths and an extra half inch. Now this one being the double line this one being the double line V, it has the uh, narrow shank handle on it. As compared to this one, which is likely a V, that's when they start putting part numbers on it. And it's, the differences are subtle, but uh, the top one has a thicker handle. And the last box I bought in the Choice of 26 was a box for 70. And this is the box here. First thing out of the box is this Sperry Digisnap DSA-1000. Basically an old school uh, multimeter. We've got a chrome edge. Uh, this is a, actually a carbide tipped blade, which is surprising. Um, a lot of blades back then were not carbide tipped yet. So obviously new in the package. Package is a little beat up. Next out of the box, we have a burns o -matic torch. We got a Sears 25 foot tape measure. Up next is this uh, hex crimper. We got an Irwin spade bit, boring bit. Craftsman 16 inch adjustable. It's probably actually new, but uh, stored in the elements, so gets a little crusty. We also have this 12 inch in here as well. It's got the plastic wrap on that they used to have at the store. A little rusty just from being stored in humidity. Got a lot of these nice black handled pliers, a little tongue and groove pliers, a little 3 8 ratchet, vice grips. You got this chisel, craftsman. Somebody took a little dinger out of it. Let's see. Um, got a flat. We got a flaticator, <laughs> tire gauge, and filler. The gauge stays on the tire, does not affect the balance. Precision engineering. So I guess uh, you drive around with these all the time and uh, always know your tire pressure. We have a Bearcat uh, antenna in here. Don't know for if it fits all models, but Next up, we have a oil filter. There's the part number on a uh, nice, what I assume is brand new, outside of having that oil filter wrench on it. A uh, 3 8 drive thumb wheel ratchet, fine tooth. Now we got a nice uh, black handled tongue and groove. Looks like something gnawed on the grip there. Skinner Seal Emergency Pipe Clamp. The one side seems to have this uh, rubber insert. The other does not, so I don't know if it fell out or someone just added that for extra security. But, uh, you know, case of emergency, there you go. Got a new old stock half inch drive, one and three A socket, only 549. And we got a little handheld uh, propane torch. It must have a uh, little gas bottle that goes in the end there. It's got a kickstand on it to free up your hands. Next up we have this, uh, is it Panduit? It says it's for plastic tie-down straps. 
We got a nice old chisel here, a little chewed up on the end, but likely could be uh, brought back. We have a insulated adjustable wrench. Uh, Sears branded, not Craftsman. It is made in France. Of course, these surfaces were bare metal and it's sitting out the, in some elements. Uh, it's going to happen over time. We also have a second one of those in here. Craftsman 4376. I believe they used to call this their starter and manifold wrench. We got another one of those uh, clip-on bolt meters and probe. Next up is this uh, Craftsman uh, crimper wire cutter. A little stubby Phillips. And we got a fuller stubby Phillips. We got a stubby flat tip. Oh. We got a half inch drive, old school 19 millimeter Craftsman. It's got the lines on the top. Those are harder to find. This uh, beat up yellow screwdriver here. Little diagonal cutters. Definitely looks like a craftsman. That definitely looks just like a craftsman, but there's no name on it. Another little flat tip screwdriver. Another flat tip screwdriver. A Sears best handle. Slightly crusty Phillips screwdriver. 3 16 flat tip. An extension on another 19 millimeter, but this is a 3 8 drive. The other one was half inch. Uh, another nice tongue and groove player. This one is likely new. No rust on that one, but this one actually had the chrome finish on. Some of those other ones just have like a like a satin finish and they tend to rust up another one of those the old red handle flat tip screwdriver another stubby flat tip and I think this is the fourth uh, tongue and groove that's this size and this one does not have the same chrome finish as this it's more of a, a matte finish and those are the ones that tend to rust up a nice uh, regular size handle uh, stubby flat tip and finally in this box we have a Sierra tool holder now they have it showing holding up pliers but it's a different um, I'm gonna guess this is probably just for pencils possibly screwdrivers and anything else that would fit in them little long thin holes oh I missed something here we also have this uh, quarter inch socket set um deep sae looks like it's new old stock but it looks like it is missing one it goes up to a half inch likely came with a 9 16 otherwise it's missing uh, maybe more than one on the small side and that's it for that one